Hello and welcome back again. This short video is going to be about um, a couple of kits that we've got. They're inexpensive kits. Um, they are separate before anyone said who thought they came as a set. They don't. Uh, the first one is a little um, cheese knife with prong at the end. If I can get it out of the packet, I'll show you. There we go. A little stainless steel cheese knife with a little prong at the end. And the other one is a cheese slicer which is that one there they're pretty simple kits to be honest there's not much um, to do with them ours are slightly different because we include an extra little bit in ours and that extra little bit forgive me for fertling with me packets is a little stainless steel end cap which is that bit there um, and what that means is it makes all these um, types of kits with one of these in a turn between centers kit you don't have to use it if you want to do just a wooden handle with no end that's not a problem at all but with some of these kits not all of them but some of these kits um, come with this little end cap to make them a little bit easier to turn and what it also does is it makes the handle look like it's a through handle so it makes it look like there's a, a piece of metal that runs all the way through so that's a, a selling advantage when it comes to craft fairs and things like that um, mainly though it's to aid the turning process um, because these are pretty simple what i'm actually going to do today is do two different things i'm not going to talk about measurements because measurements always change and the advice to anyone is whatever kit you get wherever kit you get it from um, always measure the parts and turn to those parts don't follow a video and so it says on the video it's five and a half millimeters so that's what i've done because specifications change you're never sure of exactly what kit and for each specification change we can't do a new video so measure your bits um, and put them together what i'm going to do today because there's two slightly different things is do the cheese knife prong prong knife whatever this one uh, i'm going to do that in wood um, i've got a spare bit of wood here somewhere i think it's cherry but i'm not entirely certain um, and the cheese slicer i'm actually going to do in acrylic because they're slightly different in the drilling that you need to do um, I'll cover that as and when we come to it. The first one I'm going to do is the, the cheese prong. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so when I said I'm not going to tell you the specific sizes, I meant that I'm not going to tell you the specific sizes for the kit. But what I am going to tell you is the different drilling that you need to do for different materials. So because this is wood, um, what we want to do is to force the tang which is this part here into the wood and we want that to actually force the grains of the wood apart so we need to drill a hole roughly half a millimeter smaller than this measurement here uh, and that will help it push in now i have to say at this point it does depend what wood you've got every piece of wood is different there are certain species that are exceptionally hard and trying to push one in and get the the um, fibers to part by half a millimeter with some like you babinga african blackwood um, and there are quite they might be so hard you just can't do it in which case you're going to have to drill a bigger hole and glue it in we'll come to drill, drilling bigger holes and glue it in in a bit when we come to the acrylic but for the purpose of this and this um blank scrap it's a sort of pen size blank um, we're going to be drilling half a millimetre smaller than the width of the tang okay now the second bit is what size blank do you use well kind of roughly the same as the blade it it kind of a rule of thumb of mine you can please yourself you can make it as long as you want um, but basically i look to do a handle um, the same length as the blade or the metal part um, it just kind of balances quite nicely then right so I'm going to pop these on the lathe I'm going to drill on the lathe um, and maybe I should elaborate a little bit on that as well now I've had a few people ask me why I drill on the lathe and I'm going to explain that there's a whole variety of reasons one of them I admit is to make filming it an awful lot easier because I'm in one place without having to move the cameras and things around the workshop there are there is another reason why I do it this way um, and I would advocate um, to try it a lot of people have pillar drills 
Um, and when you have a Jacobs chuck fitted in a pillar drill, you potentially have two moving parts. There's a part where you put the drill bit into the Jacobs chuck and the Jacobs chuck itself is moving in the machinery. Any moving machinery uh, has a degree of movement in it. Um, and what we really are eliminating here is one of those potential pieces of movement. If you can imagine, if you put a drill bit into your Jacobs chuck in a pillar drill, you've potentially got not a straight drill bit in the Jacobs chuck and a slightly wobbly Jacobs chuck in the drill. You can't necessarily see it. But what, in essence, that means is that um, it's similar to a kitchen mixer in that you get a planetary motion. So, and we have had people that have said they've had a, a pen tube at, say, 8 millimetres and a drill at 8.2 millimetres. The hole's much too big. The reason the hole is too big is because you're getting that planetary action on what's called drill wonder, and your 8.2 millimetre drill bit is not drilling an 8.2 millimetre hole, it's drilling about an 8.6 millimetre hole, because a little bit of wobble at this end will be a major bit of wobble at that end you just can't see it so what i do on the lathe is limit the movement by fixing the tailstock and moving that in and out which really doesn't move very far at all and just moving the actual object um, because all that movement it doesn't matter uh, on a pillar drill what fancy jig you've got underneath it you will not eliminate the potential for that movement that's what we're trying to we're not eliminating it here but we're reducing the chance of doing it the other thing i'm going to do which a lot of people don't do is drill a pilot hole first that means we're drilling with um, a, a little um, center finder here um, which will not move it will not wobble because it's only very short and it's actually quite thick we're going to start off with a hole absolutely centered if you drill with a drill bit in here and you get an odd bit of grain what you'll get is a slight movement of the drill bit like that and what starts as a tiny little movement at this end ends up as a flipping massive movement at this end just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not happening so my advice to anyone with drilling if you've got a hole that's too big measure your drill and then measure the hole you've drilled um, because drills only when they're misplaced and misaligned will drill a hole bigger than they actually are. For this one I'm going to actually try and show you what I mean by drill wonder. Whether it will do it or not I don't know, um, we'll see. I'm not sure whether you can pick that up, but that is a drill wandering. I'll just wind that in again so you can see that movement, quite a lot of movement on there. Hopefully you can see that drill wandering and that's the problem that you get. So it's not massive at this end, but it will be if I carry it on down there. So I'm going to take that out, put a little um, pilot hole in there, start again.
So now I've got my two holes I can now mount between centres and turn the handle and finish it. Now the next thing you need to do is make sure you know which end is which because you've got to cut for the ferrule at one end and leave the other end maybe curved off a bit just for the end cap. So I've got the blade going in this end and I've got the end cap going in this end. We'll turn it round and then we'll measure and mark uh, and trim down for the ferrule. So the next thing I'm going to do is take my ferrule and mark the depth that it needs to be with a little mark there. Let's just spin that round on the lathe. In this particular case it's quite a narrow ferrule so I need to make sure that I'm cutting that side of the line. We need to make sure that the ferrule covers all of the wood and doesn't leave a gap. The next thing I'm going to do is use my digital calipers. I'm going to measure the inside of the ferrule and then I'm actually going to lock those off and I'm going to use that for just measuring that as I trim down. Because we turn in between centres I can take this on and off any time I like. Uh, let me find a tool. That's the one I want. Yep, I think that will go on okay. If you do trim, take too much off here and this is too deep, you can always sand this end off. Um, I'm just going to look at that. That should fit in okay, I think. So now what we need to do is look at shaping and finishing. So now all we need to do is look at assembling the kit. So we need to put the ferrule on first. Then we're going to insert the blade and I'm going to put that in a vise and push that on. Um, I've got a vise with um, some leather parts in. Um, and then we can look at, sorry, I haven't got enough hands today. popping in the little end cap like so. You might need to glue that in. That's gone in quite loosely in that um, part there. So I just need to push those together. So there we go. I've literally just popped that blade in the vise and because it's got a metal cap at this end, I could just tap it in with a little rubber mallet. It's nice and tight in there. And there we have one cheese knife with the twin prongs at the end. It's quite a nice little kit and we'll cut some cheese with that a little bit later. Now on to an acrylic handle. So for the slice. For the acrylic handle um, I've measured the tang on here um, and there is no fi there are no fibres in acrylic so you won't get any fibres to spread apart. So what you need to do is make sure that you drill the hole as close to this size as you possibly can. You do need it just a fraction bigger um, to get um, it in the hole. This is 
as an example this is a fraction under nine millimeters so i'm going to try nine millimeter drill to put in there but we're going to have to glue this in place and that's what these um, little hooks and shapes are for when you see them um, they will grip wood to a certain degree but when they're glued in the glue falls into these little parts and prevents the um, handle from pulling out so we're going to start off with a nine millimeter drill in this end and then again five millimeters the other end for our end cap so once again I'm turning between centres, dead centre at this end, life centre at this end. I'm going to um, trim that flat then we'll cut for the ferrule on here and then just pretty much the same as the wooden one. This one just has to be glued in at the end. So I've got my finished parts. Um, and just going to check that they all fit together okay before I glue them in place which they do and that is what the finished item will look like um, before I do that I'm just going to mix some two-part epoxy um, which I've got here and then we'll look at gluing those together what I've also done is get a little stick which, and I've narrowed that down just to help me get some glue into the end here because what I'm going to do is try and get as much glue as I can down this end attach that then do the other end um, and then wait for it to set So here's the finished cheese slicer kit. You can see the little end in there and that's glued in quite nicely. And the wooden cheese knife set with the prongs. Um, as usual, I'll take some stills of those and I think I might even go in the kitchen and cut a bit of cheese so you can see them actually working because that's what they're for working at the end of the day. Um, I hope that's been helpful. Um, until next time, safe turning, happy turning. Um, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye for now.